So we covered Sub-Zero last week, and we couldn't really leave Scorpion alone, could we? We can't do it. We can't. No, fire and ice, baby. Fire and ice. So as per usual, Lucas, would you like to let the lovely people at home know what today's video is about? Well, today, we are talking about Sub-Zero's, like, counterpart... His nemesis. To, of course, Scorpion. Yes, and we'll be referring mostly to, once again, the Mortal Kombat wiki, specifically the page titled Scorpion. And we'll start, as we often do at the beginning, and just cover some general information about one Mr. Scorpion. Because his name isn't Mr. Scorpion, as much <laughs> as I'd love it to be. His actual name is Hanzo Hashashi. Okay. Yeah. Which I think they introduced like, in one of the games, they're like, no, he's Scorpion. It is easier to say. <laughs> like, Scorpion's his code name. It's like, no, man, I'm Hanzo Hasashi. And I think they, in the later games, they keep trying to go, no, he hates being Scorpion. Oh, God. He doesn't like being a Revenant. He doesn't like being a cool skeleton warrior. It's like, no, you fucking Scorpion, deal with it. You're so cool. So he's a male. He's from Earth Realm, specifically in Japan, but he was reborn in the Nether Realm when he became, you know, cool. Yeah. <laughs> when he became like super awesome and rad. When he um, abandoned the name Hanzo. Yeah, so he's a species, he's a spectre and a human. And in the present, he's a human, but he's also a spectre in the past. Okay. Just don't worry about it. Like, I guess, like, Mortal Kombat's lore is just a nightmare <laughs> to try and traverse because every single game is canon. And they're just constantly rebooting themselves it's, and it's no wonder they, with each yeah. other's timelines. No wonder oh. they like teaming up with DC. <laughs> like they've both got these completely nonsensical timelines where everything is canon and yet nothing is at the same time. So the weapons that he uses are the kunai, which he uses in all appearances because that's what's the end of his spear. Uh, even though it's like, you know, a rope dart. More yeah. realistically, it's called the rope spear, but whatever. Uh, an axe, a long sword, a ninja sword, the muga ryu, and the tanto in Mortal Kombat 11. His fighting styles, oh god no, I accidentally clicked on just the word that says Mortal Kombat and it opened oh, up no. a four like, million <laughs> word thing. So we have fighting styles, Hapkido, Pigua and Moifa. I have no, I have I have no any idea what any of the fucking those are. And we have the games that he's appeared in here. I'm going to list them all because I'm pretty sure he's appeared in every single one in some capacity. Or all maybe right. there's like one that he missed. I think he's the only character who's like he's never skipped a game. Yeah, yeah. So we have Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Ultimate Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Advance, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, MK Mythology, Sub-Zero. Oh, so no. even a game named after Sub-Zero. Oh, no. We started going down Scorpions in it. Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Gold, MK Deadly Alliance, MK Tournament Edition, MK Deception, MK Shaolin Monks, MK Unchained, MK Armageddon, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, Mortal Kombat 2011, Mortal Kombat X, Mortal Kombat X comic series, Mortal Kombat X the mobile game, and Mortal Kombat 11. So it even appears in like MK Mythology Sub-Zero, I know Mortal Kombat's coming in. <laughs> yeah, of course he is. Did you ever hear about that game that was going to be made, then got shit-canned, that Ed Boon keeps teasing people about? No. Like, do you know they had like Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, which is Liu Kang and Kung Lao? Yeah. And it's like a side scrolling beat em up with fatalities, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. There was a, like, a rumoured sequel called Mortal Kombat Fire and Ice, which is going to be Sub-Zero oh, and Scorpion yeah. teaming up, and it'd be a two-player like adventure game where you walk around as those two characters and kick the shit out of everything, and it got cancelled, and every couple of months, like, Ed Boon goes, huh, maybe we should do something with that, and then never does anything. <laughs> Because that would be a g I will play through that game right fucking now. Yep. Like, just so we could go through the game as Sub-Zero or Scorpion and hear all the quippy one-liners. The thing is, though, Carl, how would we decide who gets to play as Sub-Zero? Sub-Zero's my favourite, but I don't mind Scorpion. Yeah, yeah, he's still cool. Uh, and in that vein, are there any games like that are two-player that you actually like being player two in? Because for me, it's Gears of War. Oh, yeah. I play through all of Gears of War with a friend of mine, starting from Gears of War 1, and I had to obviously see the Xbox, so I'm Dom. And then in Gears of War 2, so I'll be Dom again. Yeah. And then yeah. in Gears of War 3, yeah, I don't mind being Dom. And you had a rough fucking time. Oh, man. Do you know what the worst bit about playing as Dom is? I'm going to bring this up because it cracks me up every time. I never see it mentioned anywhere. Do you know what, is it Gears of War 2 where you find Dom's wife? Yeah. <laughs> and like, so like, like, spoilers, like, Dom's whole shtick is I want my wife. Yep. My wife's been kidnapped by the enemy, where is she? And you find her in like some pods. And you know shit's rough when you find like your loved one in a pod. Yeah, it was like a torture chamber or some shit. And he finds that she's emaciated, basically skeletal at this point. Yeah. And like you have that moment that you have a lot in fiction where it is, oh, you have to put your loved one out of their misery. The thing about Gears of War though is that it's not exactly a game over subtlety. So when Marcus Phoenix hands the pistol to Dom. It's not like a, a tiny handgun, it's the ball-top yeah, pistol. it's like the hand cannon bigger than her head. <laughs> and obviously they do, they try and do it tastefully, like off-screen where you just hear the gunshot, but like, I'm assuming, Lucas, you can put a clip in of this. Like In the like Gears of War games, the ball-top pistol just will rip through a heavily armoured enemy and just like completely like just give well, them. 
it's like even from like across the map, it explodes heads when you headshot people. He's putting it to his wife's temple at point blank range. <laughs> And then you have that amazing moment in like Gears of War 3 where, spoilers, Dom dies. Yep. And it's so bad, but they save it by playing Mad World. <laughs> because <laughs> it's just Dom just like driving an explosive tanker into the locust like hive. And you say, do, 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 do. It's like, oh man, he's so bad. I love it. Honestly, I always love playing this Carmine, but not like the cool Carmine that shit they bring Carmine. Back. Yeah, like shit Carmine that gets his shit pushed in. In the first, like, half an hour of the game. Oh, man. My favourite thing about that, though, is after, like, Dom dies, me and my mate went for Dom. And every <laughs> single enemy, yeah. we did not spare a single enemy. Like, no, you are not getting the satisfaction of a headshot. You don't die easy for Dom. And then, you know, again, spoilers for these very old games. You take down the entire Locust Horde. Gears of, three, like, Gears of War 3 ends. Yeah. Gears of War 4, oh, it's not the Locust. It's like the swarm or some shit like that. And it's just, oh, it's the locust bat. Great. So, is Gears of War 3 ending where you have like 50 Hammer of Dawns, the best ending in any video <laughs> game ever? Because first person shooters always struggle with like, you know, getting a final level boss that feels like, you know, satisfying. Yeah. So what they do is throughout all of Gears of War say, oh, the best weapon in the world is the Hammer of Dawn. But there's like four satellites left in orbit and we can't send more. So you can only use it when it's overhead. Yep. And they say, we use the last of humanity's resources to move every Hammer of Dawn satellite above your location. You now have 50 of them. Just go ham. <laughs> it's so good. Anyway, um, Hanzo Hasashi, better known as Scorpion, which in Japanese literally translates to, you will not believe it's Lucas, full Scorpion man. <laughs> His name... <laughs> I'm not full Scorpion Man. The foresight his parents had. <laughs> to name him full Scorpion Man. Oh, God. I think that's, no, that's what Scorpion is translated to in Japanese. So his name doesn't mean full Scorpion Man. But Scorpion's like name in Japanese is just full Scorpion oh, Man. Oh, okay. Oh, he's a resurrected ninja in the Mortal Kombat fighting game series, as well as a mascot of the games. He's one of the very few original characters to debut in Mortal Kombat arcade game. He holds the distinction, along with Raiden and Sub-Zero, in one form or another, of appearing in every generation Mortal Kombat game as a playable character. Oh, so it's him, Raiden, and then Sub-Zero doesn't count because he died in the first game, as we discussed last week. I still think it counts. It's the same fucking character. I mean, he basically is, yeah. It's, it's like when you find out that Kuma died between Tekken games. What? Do you not know that? No. Um, Kuma in Tekken 1 and 2 um, dies. And it's like a new Kuma? It's Kuma 2. But because Heihachi's really bad at naming things, he just names the cub Kuma. And do you know what Kuma means in Japanese? Isn't it bear? Yeah, so yeah. Heihachi names his bear Kuma. And then you've got King, who also died in Tekken 3. Because um, Ogre kills King. So the new King is King 2. And he just takes the mask, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah he takes the mask. It's one of the orphans that King raised. It's which like is... the mantle is passed on. And then you have Armor King, who also died. <laughs> oh, no. And he's the mantle taken by his brother, and he comes back and fights Mardok. Oh my god. Matt, what is it with fighting games and killing characters then replacing them with the same character? I was just going to say having ridiculously convoluted plots. No, it's, I just like the idea, oh, Aaron King dies, so who's this king? Oh, it's king. And he's, just, <laughs> and he's like, you know, a friend of the original king. What about Armour King? Well, he's dead. But why is there an Armour King here? Oh, it's the brother of the original Armour yeah. King. And they have this great moment at the end of one of the story missions where, like, King, in full mask, goes home and looks at the photo of Armour King. And then it smashed, he breaks it and he finds out he unfolds it and it's just a second Armour King. <laughs> <laughs> Both wearing the big dumb Jaguar mask. It's so good. So, about Scorpion. It is known that his father, a former member of, and do you know the like, band of assassins that Scorpion works with? What's the name of his clan? I'm not sure. It's the Shira Ryu, which is oh. fucking awesome, forbade his son from joining the clan as he did not wish for his son to live the life of an assassin. However, he joined anyway, in spite of his father's wishes, um, in order to provide for his wife and son. I mean, that's a good reason. Yeah, also as well, I love that, like, Scorpion, he seems like an evil villain, but like, his backstory is, my wife and child were murdered. Like, he's basically Kratos. I was going to say, does he not murder his family in the style of Kratos? No. Like, they're killed, and he swears vengeance, and becomes a spectre willingly to have the power to, like, you know, avenge them. So he's basically Kratos, but better written. <laughs> and it's really weird to think, like, yeah, Mortal Kombat games are better written, but whatever. So now Scorpion is a hell-spawn spectre inexorably seeking vengeance against those responsible for the destruction of his clan and the death of his family. Despite his malevolent appearance, he is not inherently evil. He only joins the force of evil when promised a means of resurrecting his clan on Earth or the chance to inflict his wrath against those who butchered them. 
I mean, basically, yeah, he works for his own ends. Yeah. Like, he is the atypical, just like, anti-hero. Of because just, I want vengeance and I will get it in any way. I fucking well please. Yeah, I'm not inherently bad or evil, but if you get in my way, I will kick the shit out of you. Yep. Like, I just want to murder people who are responsible <laughs> for the destruction of my clan. And then, I have to mention this, in Mortal Kombat 11, you encounter him, and in that vein, he goes, well, I don't want to fight you. Like, you're not oh, yeah. part of my, like, you know, vengeance quest, so I'm going to leave. But the reason I want you to put the clip in is because when he teleports away, he dabs. Because what he does is he like, activates a spell to teleport away, but he just goes... <laughs> and then, like, flames away, and he just looks like Scott. He's like, peace out, motherfuckers. Boom! <laughs> so I remember watching the story mode, and that came up. And obviously, they didn't know. Yeah. And it looked like a dab, but it does, and I just lost it. Scorpion is perceived by fans as the title's foremost anti-hero, and he undertakes actions that benefit the force of good, albeit in his own gruesome and vigilante manner. Which is why maybe they should make a game about him, and, you know, like, how he would, like, you know, work with a character who's, like, you know, the super goody two-shoes nice guy. Yep. That is Sub-Zero. Because I love their bro, like their bro relationship where they hate each other, but they also respect each other. They have to. It's the Goku Vegeta relationship, isn't it? Where, yeah, it like, is. Yeah. Like Scorpion says he hates Sub Zero because his brother like killed him or something like that. But so, yeah, my brother killed you. I know we wear the same outfit. You got the same name. But come on. <laughs> also, my brother's now a shadow dickhead, so I kind of hate him too. Yeah. Scorpion appears human when masked, though it is merely an illusion. Only his skull remains when he's his true form. Sometimes ablaze. I love that. Just becomes Ghost Rider. Oh, he's so fucking cool, man. She's just a flaming skull. He's yep. literally just an Ed Hardy tattoo come to life. <laughs> huh. So although Scorpion is often strict and wrathful, at times he shows a caring side and is very honourable. For example, in the original timeline, when he discovers that Sub-Zero in the second tournament isn't Bihan, so noob Sabot at that point, and is in fact his more merciful brother, he vows to protect him instead for killing his kin. And then Sub-Zero presumably rips his skull and spine out of his body. No, right, they're, they're friends. Yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> I, I like the idea because there's a bit in, like, I think, Mortal Kombat X where they're just having tea. <laughs> like, literally, they just sat there having tea and then Frost comes out of nowhere to try and kill him. Oh, no, don't talk about Frost. <laughs> no, it's Boo Boo Frost. Oh. Appearance. Scorpion appears with a traditional palette swap look and, that the other ninjas had. He kept his appearance for the first four Mortal Kombat games, after which he started to wear two swords on his back and a kunai attached to a rope on his belt. They learned that eventually they had to, like, differentiate these palette swaps. Also, how long did it take you to realise the reason he's called Scorpion is because he's got, like, you know, the spear on a rope, which is the scorpion sting. It was definitely a while. Yeah, and then when he starts to get the swords on his back, they hook over to look like the pincers of a scorpion. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you, well, how long, how old, because I was today years old when I realised that, cause it's just written here. I mean, I didn't know about <laughs> the swords. Yeah. Like, the rope and the spear, I think I found out maybe, like, when Mortal Kombat 9 came out or something it's like, like oh that. yeah, it's the Scorpion Stinger. Yeah. And it always made me weird, like, they never had, like, a variation where it poisons you. Do they not even in, like, the new games where you have the different variations? No, it's only just fire that he puts on his She would have thought the first thing they put in is, like, yeah, the, the, like, poisonous scorpion version. No, I, I would have thought they'd do it. Anyway, so Scorpion's yellow costume is said to have mocked not only Sub-Zero, but also the Lin Kuei. Oh, so that's why he has that palette swap. Yeah. So the Shirari you do not actually dress like that, but as a fuck you to Sub-Zero, he started wearing an outfit that looks exactly like him, <laughs> just to take the piss. So basically, I'm going to wear your outfit and then kill you. Yeah. I'm going to whoop you with your own face. Deal with it. So we've got combat characteristics here. So would you like to, as we did last time, just skip straight to iconic moves? And go oh, of course. Because yeah. people don't... Like, there's obviously a few famous ones, but because he's been in, like, what, 15 fucking games, they keep giving him new ones that they just really quietly push away. Like, and oh, even the list of special moves is ridiculously long. Yes, even though in most games they would have, like, four or five, but because they keep trying to revamp them. So, signature moves. Do you want to guess what the top of this list is? Well, it's got to be get over here! Yeah, the spear. Sending out a rope or metal chain tipped with a kunai at the end. It impales itself into the victim's chest, allowing Scorpion to pull him or her through the air towards him for a free hit, as well as causing a small bit of damage. This move often follows the words, get over here or come here. Now, do you know about this little Easter egg? So in Shaolin Monks, if you, um, when you fight Scorpion, if you keep dodging the spear, um, after the third time if he gets you with it, he gets mad and says, get the fuck over here. <laughs> and it's the only game in which he changes what he says. I'd have known about that if I'd played, you know, that awful game. They're actually really good. They're really fun. It's like um, just a side scroll and beat him up. Yeah, Think yeah. of it less of a Mortal Kombat game and more of just like a brawler. But uh, in MK11, the enhanced version is called Flame Spear, and he launches two at the same time. Oh, of course he does. Yeah. Those famous, like, you know, dual, like, stingered scorpions. See, I always just preferred the enhanced version where instead of pulling them and giving them a punch, 
he just pulls them forward and they're left stunned right in front of you. Yeah, because I think what they did is they realised like the stun is too powerful. So the, reg the regular version, he just knocks them out and then the enhanced version gives you the free hit. Yeah. So you can get a full combo off it. So he also has a double spear in MKX where he, just, like, he picks them up and throws them to the other side of the screen. Um, he also has an elbow to the face that sets up for a free hit, which could be a crushing blow, which completely obliterates their eye socket. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, the second um, uh, seems to me, guys, the Hellfire Punch. Which is his teleport. Yeah. Which I love because um, when you figured out how to do that in the earlier games, if you're playing against people who don't really understand fighting games, they don't know what to do against it. Which is like, oh, how am I supposed to fight you if you can just teleport and punch me? Because get good. See, I hate that, but specifically because he was a DLC character in Injustice. And he was the only character in the game with a teleport. Because the way the blocking, to get a bit nerdy about it, yeah. you held a button that automatically blocks whatever direction they're facing in Mortal Kombat. But not in Injustice, well, you've they, got a hold backwards to where they are. And every character in the game um, was basically a projectile ca like character. Because yeah. that game was all about zoning. And then they brought in Scorpion, the only character in the game with a teleport. Which so, completely neutered every other character's fighting style. He teleported past every single projectile you'd set up. And then you also had to, on reaction... Block in the opposite direction when he teleports. It's so bad. Which you could do, like, you know, in real life, but when you're fighting someone online with <laughs> Netherrealm's infamously terrible netcode, you'd get hit every time. So, yeah. Scorpion, man. Fucking sick. And then he says they've got enhanced versions, which is called the Flame Port, which adds a flaming uppercut. <laughs> and you can also cancel it in one of the games, which was ridiculous. You ever see that? Oh, my God. Where no. you can cancel it and you can use it to, like, run forward completely armoured. Oh, no. And just, like, go through everything. It's crazy. So, then he's got his leg takedown, which I love because it's so dumb. Yeah. It's like, because all the other moves in the game are so violent, then you just have this one where he just trips him up. <laughs> just goes to the ankles. Like, uh! like, tripping is the lowest form of combat. And just Scorpion, just, like, he loves that shit. And then you have the air throw. And he's one of the few characters who had that. Do you remember that? He, like, one of his signatures was throwing people in the air. Oh, yeah, yeah. Before air combat. There was, there was the air throw that Scorpion had. When everyone just like jumps up and down. Yeah. Travels then, across the screen by jumping. And I believe as well Smoke had that move and he also had Sub-Zero's rope dart. So he's just stealing his moves. Essentially, yes. And he was a better version of Scorpion in that game. And they changed that because obviously he's got to be the best. Scorpion has to be. He has fire breath. Because he can breathe fire. Yeah. He had the Hellfire, the flaming backflip kick, inner flames, flame aura, the fireball, hell flames, close flame, far flame. Minion Grab, Minion Charge, Minion Drop, Demon Dash, Death Spin, Burning Spear, Misery Blade, Hate Strike, Poke, Haymon Sweep, Hate Strike into the Haymon Sweep. And then you have his X-Ray moves. And do you want to guess what his X-Ray move is called? And I'll give you a clue. It is exactly what you think it is. Think about his name and think about the creature that it's based on. What do you think his X-Ray move is called? The Stinger. The Scorpion Sting. Okay, yeah. And then his other X-Ray move is called From Hell. <laughs> And then other moves that you have are just a throw, a throw, swords, a forward throw, a back throw. Well, yeah. yeah <laughs> I love of that. Course. That's, like, that's how much detail they go into here. So like, well, you need to know he's got a throw. So, well, I know he's got a throw. <laughs> it's a fucking fighting game. Would you know he's got a back throw? As per usual, would you like to end on the trivia section, my friend? As always. Okay, so Scorpion's name, Hanzo Hasashi, may be a possible reference to Hanzo Hattori, a famous samurai and ninja during the Japanese Sengoku period. Oh, that's cool. Well, it, it, Probably is. Yeah. Either that or it just sounds really Japanese. So, Scorpion's spear is considered a special projectile which has not been reflected by reflex skills. So, it's unique in a way because it's, it's, it's technically a grab, technically a projectile. It's like how cool would that be if you could reflect it back and then get over here on Scorpion himself? Or do that thing that Johnny Cage does in the live action movie where he runs away from it. <laughs> just a lot. No one ever thinks that. It's run away from the spear. So Scorpion's get over here and come here spear taunts in all Mortal Kombat games and movies were voiced by MK co-creator Ed Boon himself. Really? Yeah, Ed Boon does the voice for all of them. Like not the voice actor for no, Scorpion? Even when they get new voice actors in, they, they either reuse that original voice clip or got Ed Boon to re-record it. <laughs> okay, I never knew that. Yeah. That's um, cool. During an interview, um, Boon was asked why Scorpion shouts, get over here, when performing his spear move. He replied that he thinks it's just comical for the tough guy Hellspawn to say something as random as that. <laughs> um, despite Boon having voiced the lines in all of their appearances, their creation is said to be attributed to MK voice actor Richard Divizio, who says he was the first one to claim the phrase during the production of the first Mortal Kombat. Do you know that sound? That sounds like something like, no, I came up with it. Yeah. But no, it's fucking Ed Boon who's like, it's get over the, here! The voice actor with the like iconic line of his character that he didn't say, 
Just like, nah, nah, that was mine. Due to artistic license taken during the Mortal Kombat films and the cartoon, originally that scorpion spear was actually a snake-like creature spawned from the palm of his hand. I love that, because he's so dumb. Which we would make sense, given he's like, you know, he's, he's re like his Spectre-style fight. I but mean, I guess, but they just went, oh no, that, like, kunai on a rope? No, it's got to be a snake. <laughs> So, during gameplay in versus mode in Shaolin Monks, after the player unsuccessfully uses spear attack ten or more times, so I got that wrong, um, Scorpion will yell, get the fuck over here, or get over here, bitch, when he lands a hit. At that point, yeah, I don't blame him, after ten misses. Yeah, um, after defeating Scorpion in Shaolin Monks, he gets dragged into the lava by skeletons. Um, as his arm goes in, he gives the player a thumbs up, a reference to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Ah, oh, nice, yeah. Uh, which also happens in Doom, have you seen that? No. If Doom Guy, if you stand on the lava and die, Doom Guy will sink into it and give a big thumbs up as he goes down. <laughs> I love that shit. Yeah. In various interviews, Ed Boon has openly admitted that his favourite character is Scorpion. No I'm shit. I'm not surprised, yeah. <laughs> no fucking. He's on the front of every box. Uh, so he says here that Scorpion's name is mentioned in Injustice 2 by Sub Zero during an interaction with Robin, similar to how Sub Zero is referenced in Injustice 1, in which like, Scorpion makes appearance. It also says here that. Um, one of Sub-Zero's headpieces has Shira Ryu in the name, referencing the clan's past rivalry, which means that <laughs> Sub-Zero is wearing Scorpion's armour yep. as a pistol. And I love that shit, it's so good. Like, yeah, you, you ripped off the, um, the Lin Kuei armour. How about I rip off your mask, <laughs> dickhead? I've always been surprised, though, that Sub-Zero never like, came up with an ice version of the spear as a piss take. Oh, yeah. I've never actually thought of that. Like using the thing, but no, maybe we'd see that if they ever made them team up in a video game. Maybe. Because, like, can you imagine, though, if they teamed up? What the fuck would you do? How would you stop Scorpion and Sub Zero at the same time? I think they know they can't do it because it'd be too hype. It'd be too hype. We'd be able to handle them. Do you know that's happening? That's happening in the next game. That's doing <laughs> it, man. Fucking hell. I just want God Emperor Scorpion. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>